So uh, last time we ended our sort of little unit on computational models and things to do with Fourier transforms. And now we'll start a new one that's related to some algebraic topics. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you about fields and polynomials. And then we'll talk about uh, error correcting codes and derandomization and a few other things. Uh, so fields and polynomials are uh, an important topic to know about in uh, computer science theory. They come up a lot. And I want to tell you about them today and about how you can actually work with them algorithmically. Because many times, you know, like a paper will just be like, OK, let's choose a field of size 2 to the n and then start manipulating some polynomials and derive some conclusions. And so today we'll uh, talk about how all that works. I put some things up on the board already. So uh, in case you don't know, a field is like a system of numbers where you have the usual arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division by not 0. So uh, some popular examples are the rationals and the reals and the complexes, um, but not the integers because they don't have division. Uh, but there are also some fields that have only finitely many elements, and that's what we'll be mainly talking about today. Um, so uh, once we know about fields, we can talk about polynomials. And polynomials are a very important topic. And uh, the reason to introduce fields is that polynomials like to have their coefficients be from fields. OK, so that makes things uh, nice. So uh, to start, at least, we're going to talk about polynomials as um, formal expressions. Don't necessarily think of them as functions. Just think of them as formal expressions that look like this, where you add up some monomials, which are products of variables or indeterminates, which we'll call xi, and where the coefficients come from a particular field. Uh, OK, and I also put down here some uh, common notation. If f is a field and x1 through xn are the names of some indeterminates, just symbols, then this f square brackets followed by the list of the indeterminates means the set of all polynomials uh, like this, where x1 through xn are the variables or the indeterminates, and the coefficients are from the field f. OK, I also put up on the board like pretty much everything you need to know about finite fields and polynomials for CS theory purposes. So actually, after reading this, you can just all leave if you want. But I will try to uh, expand on these uh, facts for the remainder of the lecture. <clears throat> so let me go over them quite quickly. Uh, first fact is that if you have the a prime number p, and you look at the integers modulo p, then this is a field. The main trick here being the fact that um, there is division here. This set of integers is closed uh, under division or re reciprocals. And this is usually written like uh, boldface or double struck f sub p. However, uh, there are other fields of finite size. In fact, there are finite fields with q elements whenever q is a power of a prime. But it's not as simple when it's not just a prime. But it is a fact that for every prime and every positive natural number l, there's also a field with p to the l elements in it. And this is particularly important and useful in the case when p is 2. This is like the most common case in theoretical computer science, relying on the fact that for every power of 2, there's a field of that size. Uh, Furthermore, first of all, it doesn't just uh, exist. It's actually unique. So I mean, for every prime power q, there's basically one field with q elements uh, up to renaming elements. So that's uh, fine. Well, it means that there aren't any more fields, which is maybe a shame. But uh, you at least get one for every prime power. And not only that, not only do they exist, but like you can actually like get them and like work with them and do addition and subtraction and multiplication division efficiently. And what does efficiently mean here? Well, if you have a field with q elements in it, then you would naturally be able to write each one down with a name that's like log q bits long. OK, and so you would strive to make all your operations efficient in the sense that they're poly log q time. OK, and indeed, you can get this, albeit there's a very minor asterisk to do with, um, in certain rare cases, you need some randomization. But basically, it, uh, it's, it's fine. So that's fields. And now to polynomials, there's uh, really only one super key fact. It's this key fact that if you have a degree d polynomial, it has at most d roots, where a root is uh, also called a 0. It's an input that makes the polynomial output 1. I should add a keyword here, which is univariate, meaning having just one variable. 
And there's also a generalization of this fact to polynomials that have more than one variable, which is called the Schwartz-Zippel lemma. And it's basically this. If you have a multivariable polynomial, and it has degree at most d, and you pick random values for each of the inputs, then it's unlikely to output 0. And what does unlikely mean? It means probability at most d over q, where q is the size of the field. So if it's a big field, so you have lots of choices for these different a's, um, then the polynomial is unlikely to output 0. I should also add the words here. P should not be the all zeros polynomial. Then it's very likely to output 0. Uh, 